Who's going to be my person? Does anybody want to be my? Not me. I'm terrible at remembering things. I read Thursdays because I thought today was Thursday. So I had to go back and read all days. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm sorry to everybody. So we didn't record the first section, which is about the virtue of an educated voter. But I did it on the pre, right? The pre video and and the, the pre-video for the next class, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but I think um, we're just gonna have to move on. Um, let's see. So this is taking the idea of management. And let me just once again say that students, I've read a lot of papers about students who use some authority figure they've had, oftentimes it's a coach, and evaluating them in terms of this model for a good leader or good manager. And then a lot of students aspire to some kind of leadership position. Uh, a number of them want to be coaches when they grow up. <laughs> um, all right, so self-control that at, at a, an organization, the, um, the leaders would model self-control, right? There are people who work in companies where they know that the boss is a womanizer, cheats on his wife, um, you know, sleeps with whoever. And I just think that's, I mean, people get used to it, but, you know, Aristotle would say it's a lower level. It's a corruption. It's a corruption of power. And it also is poor management. You have to set an example. So practical wisdom involves living the truth, right? You can't, you have to live a, an excellent life and you have to show people you enjoy it and you have to inspire them, right? To, to get past themselves and care about public life and care about the climate at the company. I used to teach business ethics and I was surprised. I had people coming in who are business owners because I felt like they know more than I do. They talked over and over about the climate that they're creating in their business. And they say, that's how to get good employees and that's how to keep good employees. And you save money over time if you create a positive climate where people are proud to work there, they're respected. Um, if anything goes wrong, you know, if some person gets hired that isn't respectful, then they, you know, they, they catch it right away and they're gone. So self-control is important. Try, don't use sex to try and sell your product if you can avoid it. And if you can't, that the head of the company would let the workers know that this isn't my morals, but, but evidence shows that our bottom line came out ahead when we started using these ads. But if we can avoid it in the future, we will. Courage is knowing how to act in a situation. And so leadership involves a lot of courage. You have to make decisions all the time. You have to take risks. Um, I, that's why I would be terrible at it. I would overthink everything. Um, they can't fear. There will always be some employees that complain and there will always be some employees that always agree, you know, and they're not critical. Um, but a good leader should communicate that they like feedback and have opportunities for employees to, you know, put their opinions in some box or something. And the leader would let people know that they're reading suggestions. Um, let's see. So a leader shouldn't find a scapegoat. They should admit to their mistakes. The more you have this free and open discussion, the more you help the employees participate in the public life, the more democratic the society is. Because if people are respected at work then they, and they learn how to think about climate at work, 
they'll go out and think about, well, how can I create a climate in my community? And how can I create a, a positive climate? And just doing, imitating all these behaviors of meaningful dialogue, open, free and open dialogue about serious questions. Um, they'll create trust and goodwill. They'll basically trust people unless there's a reason not to trust them. But bad leaders, right? Prey on people's weaknesses, try to get people to compete against each other. So, you know, there's layers and layers of issues related to uh, fear, right? You can run a company where you tap into fear all the time, or you can run a company where you really try to avoid fear and tap into this desire, generosity, trust, and goodwill. Um, so the company could donate to non nonprofits. They could ask um, employees to make suggestions uh, and be transparent. I know that when I lived in uh, Minneapolis, the Special Olympics was there one year and all these people at Honeywell and these big corporations were allowed to take, I don't know how many days off, a day or something. And they all had these t-shirts. And I mean, it was really nice. It was just a big community event. Um, that volunteerism is uh, encouraged as part of being a human being. And um, then there's lots of things people could do during lunch breaks. They could have separate into little groups and have like parent of young children group where during their lunch, they're talking about their parenting or have uh, somebody, a professional, an expert in some field and the, the boss could announce, okay, over in room so-and-so we're gonna have, we have this person coming in who's gonna lecture. So just encouraging citizens to be politically aware, socially aware. Um, there's like in Minneapolis, there's the Guthrie Theater. You could have someone who is in the play come to the company and give this little talk. And during lunch hour, people wanna hear about the play would go hear about it. Um, so all that kind of stuff, being even tempered, you really have to model that in order, to, you know, you can't tell people, it's important that people are even tempered and they don't get too angry at each other, but you have to model that sense of humor, learn how to laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously. Friendship, encourage friendship bonds between workers instead of co competition and ad adversity, like you reward your workers for being mentors. You might wanna set up where every new employee is given a person who's to mentor them into the job. And that person is open for any questions that the employee has. I mean, you can really do things to weave people together or to unravel them or to make them, if they're competitive, to make them so they don't communicate very much. You, you can really set up a punishment reward system that makes a lot of difference. Uh, there are ways that you can sort of push the envelope of the laws and always you know, try to go right to the edge, or there are ways you can be proactive, like set things up so that, that there's an incentive for going even over and above what the law would require. Um, okay, All the relation between the generations is important so that older, workers who have all this institutional memory don't feel like they're being ignored or threatened, like they're gonna get fired because they get paid too much. The younger ones are gonna come in. Uh, sociability, pride, you know, encourage people to take pride in their work, to go over and beyond. That if they do go over and beyond the job, that they get honored for that. They get recognized, um, appropriate ambition. You might come in at a certain level of ex expertise, but the job encourages you to keep educating yourself and keep becoming a better employee. And, um, and you know, they pay you more if you get more skills. So you don't always have to be um, promoted upward 
within your department, you might want to have a lateral move where you learn a different skill so you can come out. So the company would, you know, encourage you if you wanted to, you wanted to work in four different departments and get all these skills before you start thinking about moving up. I mean, just giving people choices. Um, don't be petty or mean spirited. Know yourself. Know that if it was something to do with you that um, made the company better or worse. Um, and then you would also make good rules and regulations within the company and you would enforce them equally. That's, that's political. That is the laws and um, uh, application of the law, enforcement of the law, pay the workers appropriately. And then in relation to government, you wouldn't always be trashing government. You would actually have a liaison. I think you should have an employee who's informed about legislation and who also can go to the legislature and make recommendations that aren't just based on how our company can make more money and screw everybody else, but how the state would benefit with this particular law on businesses or this particular changing of the law or things like that. But I mean, people who really think about it and think about preserving a middle class. Um, don't overvalue the contribution of business. So every sector of society makes a contribution. It's not all about wealth, right? It's about education, healthcare, public parks, volunteer, everybody contributes. And I think these virtues, if you think of them, it depends on how you think of them and how you apply them, but they are universal um, and they can apply in pretty much any country or any institution, um, any kind of leadership. So uh, yeah, we have 15, 18 minutes and everybody has to speak, okay? Oh my gosh, there's how many people left? Who disappeared? Okay, um, Titus, why don't you start? Sure. Well, I can say for one, this is kind of bringing back memories of a class I recently took. It was an organization and administration class. Okay. And one of the things we talked about, one of the general points is, obviously you heard the phrase, if you work, if you do something you love, then you never work a day in your life. But a huge part of that is the person you're working for, for say. So I feel like all of these values play a great role. And we talked about some or what we thought were the most important. And I personally said fairness, respect, and loyalty being very important because for the most part, you just have to trust that the person who's leading you know what they're doing and have stability or else if you can't trust them, you can't trust your job and you can't trust the stability of your life as far as at least a financial standpoint. Yeah, so it makes a lot of difference if you're good or bad. Okay, go ahead, Mary Hannah. Kind of going off what Titus said, cause I really agree with what he said. But like, I think one of the biggest things like nowadays with leaders is treating everybody equally. And not, I'm not just talking about like race and stuff like that, even though that is mainly what I'm talking about, but um, also like taking it from, I play basketball. So a coaching standpoint, not necessarily picking favorites, like um, treating the worst player on the team equal as like the best player on the team. Like we take vans and it's like the coach would want the best five players that they get along with the best in the van instead of trying to, build a relationship with everybody because that would make a more well-rounded team and it'd be more enjoyable for everybody because it's not just the games that matter but also the practice and goes into all that stuff it also makes you want to stick with it like I really love Lions basketball program like it gets intense but I really like it and I think it's just because our coach expects expects the same out of everybody and so just expect like the expectations just need to be equal throughout the whole program I will say I admire coaches a lot because their character is tested way more 
than us PhDs in our offices, guys. <laughs> At least I know that, right? To some extent, you know, officially we're put on a pedestal, you know, but unofficially, I don't have any illusions about that. I think that the coaches, the staff members are often role models for students. And, you know, professors, some professors are models for some students, but I, I don't, it's not the majority. It's all this other stuff that goes on um, that they don't get enough credit for, I think. Uh, the first year advisors are good. So anyway, I just want you to know that I know that <laughs> because I lived on campus for seven years and, you know, I talk to students a lot. So I, I do know about the climate on campus and I know that professors, you know, they think they think they're more important than they are. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm a, what? You said that, not me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm a mom, so that humbles you pretty well. <laughs> you, you're just like you really know all your flaws. And um, all right, so Akaya, what do you think? So are, am I supposed to like say which one I feel is more important, like which point? Yeah, I just, yeah. What's on your mind? Okay. Yep. Well, um, self-knowledge and um, self-control stuck out to me because um, I know like from a um, school standpoint, standpoint and also like a working standpoint, um, you want to make sure that like, you know, you don't um, underestimate anybody. You don't want to get like anything misconstrued in with like the information within the company or like within your job or within like your school or anything. And then like with the self-control, you wanna make sure you have relationships with your peers, with your coworkers, because you don't want, um, like I said, you don't wanna get anything misconstrued. You don't wanna uh, misinterpret any type of information that, you're given or you're given somebody else, so. Okay. A lot of my students have jobs, like summer jobs uh, in gas stations or some places and the bosses are very authoritarian. Um, is that true? And then, I mean, really a higher level of education increases the likelihood that you will get this climate where people trust each other and have dialogue with each other, which is another big advantage. Um, let's see, how about Lekesny? Do you have a reaction to the model of management? Uh, yes, no. uh, <laughs> for me, I think uh, sociability is important. Especially being a, like a coach or a professor, you know, or even like a member or something. Because people like if I'm working under you, and, um, and like I got excuses for stuff happening, like you know, some people they don't care about your personal life or about um, uh, like they're just sitting around their job. Like if you're not doing for the job, like. There's no point in having you. So I think sociability is important. Okay. So when you are doing your posts, try to take some quotes from the article. You just have to make sure you communicate to me that you read it, right? Uh, be careful because if I, I'll grade you down and I'll say, I can't even tell if you read the material because I think that's a legitimate reason to grade you down. <laughs> Not because I don't trust you, it's just that you absolutely have to communicate that to me. Um, so, Caitlin. Um, so, management especially, so I've had a lot of problems with say like a manager, as in like my coach. And so this, like all of these things that, this whole time I've just been thinking, about how it relates to uh, one of the coaches. Um, and I don't know, I just kind of have some strong opinions because I feel all of these things that I think are important were not like enforced. And I think one of the biggest things that stuck out 
was um, when you said getting and keeping good employees takes like mutual respect and a positive and good environment and morality. And I think that especially from coaches, being able to respect and like Mary Hannah said, um, treating each player the same. Like, I don't know. I just have strong feelings about this topic at the moment. So, well, you might be able to write a good paper about it, right? That's definitely, yeah. As soon as we started talking, I was like, yeah, this is going to be my paper. So, well, so my job is simply to let you know that there's a system there and it's based on the human condition. It's not like life is one dang thing after another. They're actually interrelated in a, in a systematic way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I want you to know. Uh, who, who else has not spoken? Um, Michael? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, so one of the main things I focused on was actually um, at the end when he was talking about the universality of it all um, and how like these are really like, I, I don't really put any of these over another because I feel like, you know, to have the, you know, the, the management that you're looking for. And also just in general, I feel like these are, um, again, just uh, good virtues that like an individual should have and that it shouldn't necessarily be specific to management. Um, but yeah, I just thought that um, like you kind of need all of these to, you know, sail smoothly, so to speak. Um, and then I had one more thing, uh, but I didn't write it down. So I was looking back at it. I can't remember. Well, one thing I do want to point out to you is that it does matter how you're treated at home, right? Because you carry that with you into other situations. And if parents are too rigid and the kid can get away from them, you know, they're just going to go. And they create problems, right? And so I think at home, it starts with learning how to rule and be ruled, being listened to. Remember Mr. Newland said, if you just listen to people, a lot of the dysfunction goes away. So, you know, raising your kids to be self-controlled, enjoy it, but also to have dialogue. And then these things where you might think that whether your coach is good or not has nothing to do with a democracy or citizenship. Well, it does, right? Every single relationship, every single group, every single community, we're either a mini functioning democracy or we're a mini authoritarian system or we're a mini dysfunctioning democracy, right? So, you know, that's how we are. We're social and political by nature. It's like built into us. And the way we learn how to be fully human is in these relationships and communities. But there are healthier and less healthy ways of doing this. It's not relative, right? It's imprecise. There's lots of, you know, so someone could take this model of leadership and try to follow it. And there could be, there, there's a lot of variety, right? So maybe on the surface, they might look different, but actually when you look underneath and there, so there's many varieties of how to run a company well, where actually, if you look at it, they are doing that. Um, but then there's other people who think they're doing it, but nobody else thinks they're doing it, right? So somebody thinks, they're being um, open-minded, but somehow every conversation they have, they get the last word and they're always right. And they never learn from anybody or change their mind. Does that make sense to you? Is that they don't really know themselves. They're a lot more arrogant than they think they are. Uh, so there's that, right? There, it's really difficult. Um, someone might think that they're, they take the appropriate risks, but everybody else in the company thinks they're too risk averse, right? They're not. So, the, you know, there's a lot of disagreement, but I think if you start out with at least 
here's the issue. At least you can agree on the issue. And then you disagree on the details, the particulars of a situation. So you might disagree. Someone has to, has to make a decision about, uh, I don't know, whether to let company employees volunteer for the Special Olympics, right? What are the options? Well, you could uh, make it, um, okay, some people are gonna say, look, if you let them off in an afternoon, you have to let everybody off for the afternoon and they can decide if they wanna do it or not, right? That would be one person. The other person, no, you only get the afternoon off if you actually do it. Someone else will say, oh no, I don't think we should do it. It's too complicated and they can volunteer in other ways or blah, blah, right? Um, that's not even a very complicated one. There would be a lot more, there would be other options, but the idea is that you're considering all the options. Sometimes people think there's only these options and actually there was another choice and they didn't think of it. Or some people think that a certain choice is an option and it really isn't. This is not even possible. Then among the things that are possible, which one would have the best consequences long-term? Um, and part of that is the way you do it, right? So if you did the volunteer Special Olympics, if you also did it as part of a whole climate of volunteerism, then it would have even more positive effects. If you just did it as a one-off, you know, might be good, but so, you know, it's just, it's imprecise and it's complicated, but it's not unintelligible. And you, you, that's how you train yourself, how to develop practical wisdom. And um, I think that when you come to Lyon College and you get thrown in and you have roommates and you have resident life people and you are thrown into so many communities. And so I think you really are asked to tr start developing practical wisdom. You, you, I mean, you get force fed, you know, you get this and um, sometimes you make mistakes, right? And then everybody knows you made a mistake. So there's a lot of uh, feedback loops, uh, but, but I hope you understand that the idea is that that's good for you to learn that and that that'll help you be a better citizen in a democracy. That this, again, as I've said many times, this kind of education is designing you for being a good citizen. And our founding fathers, the, you know, the people who are traditionalists and patriotic and love their country, like me, <laughs> value liberal arts education. Liberal arts education is dying at the moment. Uh, it's being demonized as, you know, anti-American. Um, and some of the teachers truly are too far at an extreme. Um, so there's, there's a reason why it gets demonized, but sometimes because the people in it are not being democratic, but there also are people with a motive to undermine our democracy and they will demonize small liberal arts colleges. Does everybody know that? Because if you really wanna have an authoritarian society, you gotta get rid of small liberal arts colleges. And if you really want a democratic society, you've gotta have as many as possible or you've gotta create a climate where this kind of deliberation and these kind of opportunities um, are available to people. Um, uh, Americans form a lot of clubs. They're notorious. Well, clubs are good if they're teaching you how to rule and be ruled. They're bad if they dissipate your energy so that you never think about being a good citizen. You just get caught up in your little hobby or obsession or, you know, think about anything except how to maintain our democracy. So, um, so those are just things for you to think about and time's up. Um, 
I will actually make the video. I don't have class right away. So I'll be able to make the video uh, quicker. Boy, that 1 a.m. <laughs> making that kind of wore me out. So from now on, all I have is I have one more. No, no, I have one more day of a, a night class, but that's on a Saturday or something. And then I just have the student final exam. So I don't. That's over. <laughs> and um, anyway, any other questions? Do you have I gotten all the videos posted for this class? Has everybody tried it? Because I, you know, in the midst of all this stuff, I did post the wrong video in one of my classes this week. And so I got to find out. Oops. <laughs> So I just want to make sure this one wasn't the wrong one. Okay. Okay, take care. I mean, 